Welcome to another episode of The Everyday Investor. Today we have a very special guest. This gentleman has acquired a number of skills over the years. He also runs a very successful business. Uh, TI family, help me welcome Philip Porter. How's it going, Phil? What's up, what's up, man? Can you hear me? Doing? I can hear you great. Okay, no, I can hear you. Uh, thanks for... Uh, just giving us a little bit of a little bit of your time uh, today, kind of go through a number of things uh, as it relates to investing in yourself as well as uh, just investing in different things such as businesses, real estate, stocks, whatever your investment vehicle is. Uh, the goal of the channel is, you know, pretty much to uh, have these different interviews as case studies, so that as people, the TEI family, I call them, uh, kind of looks on. Hopefully they can identify themselves with one or more of the guests uh, that we go through and talk about different investments, uh, different uh, skills, acquire, acquiring different skills and things of that sort. And they can kind of pick up on those things and kind of take those, hopefully apply some of those skills and in, uh, investment. I don't want to say tips, but the way different people invest uh, in their everyday lives and be able to apply them in their life and uh, just mm -hmm. make more money and just live a better life. Yep. So I like to start all the way at the beginning uh, as it relates to kind of growing up. So did you grow up in a, uh, from a financial standpoint, uh, a lower class uh, upbringing, middle class, uh, upper class? I know for myself, my mom, she raised me and my brothers. And you know, again, she gave us all the love and all the uh, you know, discipline and things like that we needed. But from a uh, financial aspect, I would probably say we were maybe lower middle class or lower class to lower middle class. So how did you grow up and actually where did you grow up? All right. So excellent question. So I grew up in the east side of Detroit, on the east side of Detroit and similar, I would say lower class to lower middle class at times. Uh, I mean, you know, we were just getting uh, Goodwill boxes on Christmas and, you know, <laughs> so whatever, you, <laughs> I'll let you place that. But yeah. So so then did like growing up, uh, and again this is this may be more of a I guess a, a lower class thing just of not knowing, but I know as I was growing up, you know moms, uh, parents they really didn't talk to uh, me and my brothers about you know finances, about uh, money, uh, investing things like that. Did you have a similar experience, or how did your parents uh, kind of still in you uh, money and? Uh, uh, tips about money and investing and things like that growing up i mean the extent of the let's say financial or money or knowledge that was imparted to me was just a few different things one money doesn't grow on trees two get a good job you know get go to school get a good job so go to college and uh save your money that's pretty much it and some of that was not even direct not to the like not like hey here are the key principles to money not even i would not even giving that much credit right where you actually have enough awareness to be able to say hey like here are the things that's important it was basically just me learning through observation and maybe at some point some of those things were actually said but that's pretty much the extent like i said save your money um you know so don't don't like don't don't spend it all so try to be smart go to school so you can get a good job and you know it don't grow on trees so it's a, it's a scarce resource right right now i was going to say definitely seemed like uh more of a scarce resource and uh i guess how did that i guess affect or mold your view on money i know a lot of times uh whether we uh like it or not or we you know understand it or not you know, the different principles that our parents teach us or the lack thereof about money and uh growing up they kind of stick with us you know you hear a lot of adults say hey uh my parents actually my last guest he said his dad always preached to him about the frugality of money uh be frugal with your money things like that so now as he's growing up uh and he actually makes a decent amount of money as well but he's frugal but he still you know, spends and things like that but uh, he is frugal and that always what his dad preached to him growing up always uh, stuck with him so uh, did your parents kind of teach you the things that they uh, taught you about money growing up? Uh, did that kind of uh, mold or shape you as you were you know, growing up in middle school and high school? Or was it just, hey, no, I'm trying to be a kid. I'm, I'm trying to live a good life and uh, I, I'm not going to worry about this whole money thing yet. 
No, good question. Good question. One hundred percent impacted me as a kid, and even to the to this day. Especially when I got into doing like business and whatnot, like you end up with these invisible ceilings that you don't realize that you're at you in this box because you always lived in this box. But now that you are doing something that is, or at least I was doing something that's going to get you outside of the box, you start to realize, oh, that's a ceiling there. And it's an invisible ceiling until you get something or someone that comes in and shows you, all right, no, that's actually not the, the proper way to think. So you get all these blind spots. Um, as a kid, so let's say like you're talking about in like middle school, you no, know, definitely it, it framed me at that point because, you know, yes, I'm being a kid, but also uh, like aware of money situation, you know, as far as like, you know, so when I was a kid, you know, you try not to ask your parents and stuff for like a lot of stuff just because, you know, we ain't got it like that. You know what I mean? So, so I was at school, like I remember, uh, like I, I played on the football team, like in the sixth grade or whatnot. It was like $82, like to get your pads or whatever. So I basically just had to go out on cutting grass to get that. Uh, like the shoes and stuff. I wanted some nice pair of shoes. At that time, it was rock for it, right? So everybody wanted rock for it. So I pretty, you know, I had my mom take me to the mall to go get them, but that was pretty much it. You know, I, I pretty much paid for them for myself. And, uh, you know, just so I was, I was working on things and then all the way through high school was, was working. So that way, you know, you just got your own, at least so that what you're not as much of a burden, you know? So I would say that's how, it, as a kid, it framed me. And then obviously to today, uh, I would think it's probably so impacting me today, right? Cause it's all about your perception, your mental, like your mental capacity. So it's, a, even to this day, it affects it. But the biggest thing that I would say is a, what was something that was hit was, or the biggest event was, like I said, me getting into business, getting into entrepreneurship, investing, and then not being able to achieve up until a point where I can grow out, grow those things, you know? Right, right, right. So then, okay, so now you're growing up, you're at the high school stage, your parents, parents taught you everything that they know uh, about money and saving and not overspending and uh, going to college, uh, getting a good degree, things like that. What uh, were some things that surrounded your decision to actually go to college um, as opposed to going to get a skill trade, something like that? And then uh, how did you decide the degree that you uh, was going to pursue once you uh, once you got to college? Because I know for me as a mechanical engineer, undergraduate uh, or you know, earning my undergraduate degree in mechanical engineer, that was something that kind of fell in my lap later on. I just really mm -hmm. was able to uh, get I had a good mentor and right before I uh, actually started taking classes at Michigan State, he kind of brought that up like, yeah, you said you like math and science, do engineering, and then you can go from there. So, you know, up mm -hmm. until that point, I didn't know what an engineer was just because, again, just where I was growing up, I didn't see that every day. So uh, you being uh, in Detroit, how did uh, uh, you make that decision on, okay, one, do I go to college and where do I go to college? But also, too, what do I study in college? And that, that's okay. not get a basket weaving degree, but let's go get a degree mm -hmm. that's going to mean something in the end. All right, basket. Yeah, that's the basket <laughs> right, 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 right. That might be useful. So, all right. So, uh, so excellent questions. So, for me, slightly different. Even as a kid, so in the, uh, Detroit has this program called DEPSET, right? Okay. Um, I actually forget the exact acronym, but it's a STEM program, right? It's gonna teach you the sciences. So that way you can like, like you can excel in those, in those fields. Anyway, that program is a, it's a, it's a fourth grade through 12th grade program. So I was enrolled in that. So pretty much my parents, again, you gotta think where they're coming from. You coming from a time where everybody went to the factories and yeah. just worked hard. Like you coming from that background with no college experience, and everybody you don't you may not know but everybody that you hear that's successful or they're telling you success is telling you to go to college so for me it wasn't really a decision of if you're going to college or not that was a good thing that my parents were able to do um as far as going to school was concerned as uh, it wasn't a question like oh do you go to school or do you? it was like no basically you're going to college i was just which college you're going to right so that's pretty much how that landed and then me being in that depth set program like they, that's literally what it was, right? That's literally, it was all STEM. So I'm, I'm in this program every summer or even sometimes in the winter where you're learning the skills essentially to be an engineer. Um, or maybe not as an engineer, it could be someone, like I said, one of the sciences as it is in, in STEM. So 
Now, the other, now what really put me into engineering specifically is I went to Cass Tech. So in Cass, they actually have a program or had a program where it was manufacturing technology and engineering or something like that, something to that extent, right? And that's what it was. And if you chose that quote unquote curriculum, those are the type of classes that you took. So in this case, I took more math classes and more in science and stuff like that and more advanced because that's the curriculum that I chose. So, and, and I just kind of, and why did I choose it? Cause it was completely up to me. I could have chose communications, business. I could have chose whatever I chose it because, Oh, I'm in this depth chat program. Probably this is a good one to choose. So it was more happenstance from that perspective. And then going through that from uh, ninth grade through 12th grade. All right. And then graduating, I was like, okay, you going to Michigan state. What are you going to go into? Oh, okay. I'm going to go engineering. And I, I didn't know which engineering at first. Yeah, I just knew engineering and then ultimately selected mechanical engineering as well. No, and, and again, I mean, I, I think that's an important step because kind of growing up in, you know, I'm from the west side of the state of Michigan, so we didn't have the automotive plants. We had maybe different plants, but, you know, in Detroit, from my understanding, you growing up, you know, working at the Big Three, working at, uh, yeah, Big Three, you're, you're making good money, and you don't have, yeah. a, have to have a degree or anything like that. So a lot of times people, that was kind of their plan. I'm, I'm going to go get a job for, you know, one of the Big Three, and I'm going to ride it out for 30 years. But then it seems like 90s, maybe 2000s, you start to have this switch where it's like, okay, no, you're going to go to college because uh, that was a thing to do. But now, mm-hmm. I, obviously, our parents not really kind of knowing anything and most of them not having gone to college. They, they can't really or they're not uh, giving us tips as far as, you know, what to go to college for. Again, I talked about the basket mm-hmm. week degrees, but you see a lot of, uh, you know, students that they graduated from these colleges and they have a communications degree they have interdisciplinary studies they have history degrees degrees that's going to make a that's going to be tough to get a to get a living or make a living once you graduate and mm-hmm. always again i'm not I'm, I'm for college i think that going to college you have to be intentional in terms of what you're going to get you know like i said the engineering degrees yep. uh, maybe nursing uh some type of uh, technology degree, science degree, those are the degrees that you're going to be able to make a good living, uh, you know, once you graduate. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, I think that's noteworthy to say, hey, you know, yeah, my, my parents, and they, they were just like, go to college. But now, you know, just me being in this program, I was able to kind of make the connection and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Because I'm sure it was people mm-hmm. in that program that that didn't do engineering, that they kind of ventured off. If they did go to college, they, they did something completely different. Uh, yeah. So, so, so no, that, that, that's pretty interesting. So now you're at Michigan State University. I know coming in, in, in obviously we were at Michigan State University at the, at least at the same time for a portion of it. Coming from a small town such as Muskegon, uh, it was a kind of a different, uh, it was eye opening for me. How, how was, you no, know, and then, I, you know, obviously I was playing football there as well. So now that added a different dynamic, but you came from a bigger city. So you mm-hmm. come from a bigger city in Detroit. Going to Michigan State, uh, how, how was the adjustment in, in college and uh, going from Detroit to, to Michigan State University? Okay, so again, another excellent question. One note, so you had mentioned about choosing different programs. The thought that come to mind is just being there, and maybe this does answer some of that question, is you notice a lot of people in terms of choosing curriculums, it's no longer about it's not really about which program you're going to is it get to a point where maybe because I know people who started in engineering and they ultimately changed to something else. Right. That was, quote unquote, easier because right. it was more so about just finishing college It's I graduated. The goal line was I graduated and that's it. It don't matter if it's a communications degree right. or if it's, you know, I graduated. Right. Forget everything else. I'll come later. But for now, I graduated. So therefore, I celebrate. So, uh, but no, your points is valid, right? You going to college, you got to have something that's actually going to, like, what's, what does that look like at the end of the road? Right. Um, so that adjustment, right? So grew up in the city, Detroit, um, and now I'm in college, right? So, I, I mean, even growing up, I, I never really, like, uh, gravitated towards, like, the bad stuff. Obviously, you do kid stuff, but yeah, I never gravitated towards, like, the, like, the, like, the, like, the worst of the worst that could be going on in Detroit. Right. So the transition and then me going to CAS, which was a select school, like obviously I kind of shield you a little bit more because now you're really not around the neighborhood kids. You're more around people who are trying to do something with their lives, et cetera. So anyway, going to Michigan State, uh, I mean, the transition, I mean, I'm going to say it was, I'm not going to say normal, but 
some of that was to be expected. Like you say, you going from living at home with your parents to now you got your own dorm room or you manage your own time and you don't have to worry about, you know, not worry about, you don't have anyone telling you to do X, Y, and Z. Right, right. So I definitely had that transition in terms of, all right, I got to get myself up and go to class. I got to plan my own timing and whatnot. I got to take care of my own finances, whether it's student loans or, it, you know, uh, or, or figuring that out. I had a couple of scholarships as well. So, um, so it, you got kind of that, like, that was what my adjustment was. And then obviously, I'm not going to say obviously, but staying focused, right. And being disciplined. I think that's uh, one of the one things like, for example, like you said, you have, you have football, right. not only through high school, but also in college. Um, I had some extracurricular activities in, in high school, but, but not like, uh, not to that extent. And then when I got to Michigan state, I didn't have any extracurricular activities. It was like, you go to class, in my mind, actually, if I think about it, I thought I was focusing. Like, okay, only thing I got to worry about is school, so just do school. But that, but that's that's actually a, a, can be a somewhat of a contradiction because it, when you got more stuff to manage, all of a sudden you actually get more organized, right? So if you got two a days on the football team, right, it may seem like it is you do have more going on, but you also build that skill or build that muscle of okay, I got this regimen, I need to do this, and I do that. And I mean, I'm not sure how much you talk about it, but you know, I, we even talked about it when we had class together. You was always the one that was all, like you was on top of it. And you know, that discipline comes from being in those different things. So that was like my, my transition was like learning those skills, learning things like how to actually study for school and whatnot. Cause I didn't know that, right? Uh, like for me, again, going through high school and now this is where I'm, you know, I'm get, start getting straight about it. Like going through even uh, high school, it was just about getting a good grade. Just like yeah. I talked about earlier, you get the good, um, you know, the goal is just to graduate, right? In high school, it was all about just get the good grade, you get passed, right? So I went to I went to college with that same mentality, whatever it takes basically to finish. And maybe you got to study a little bit, that's cool, and work hard. But then also, what happens if you don't study? You're trying to figure out, and you just like doing whatever you got to do to be able to uh, like pass a class or even, you know, they, you know, C's get degrees and stuff. You're not right, even, right. you're not even worried about like getting an A in this class. You're like, man, as long as I pass, I don't care. You know what I mean? So, um, so, uh, so dealing oh, and, with that transition. Oh, and, and, and that's good because I, I think you, you hit on a couple of different points there, uh, kind of going back to the degree thing. And one of the reasons that I'm not necessarily against college is because, you know, if you have an engineering degree, if you have a technology degree, and some of these degrees, you're coming out making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, now obviously, if you're going to get a basket weaving degree like communications or something like that, and no disrespect to anybody who has a communication degree or what a lot of people consider as a basket weaving degree, not only are, is you're going to, are you going to have a tough time finding a job, but if you do so happen to find a job, you're not, you know, you're maybe getting paid 40 grand or 50 grand. And it's just tough to make a, a, a good mm-hmm. living doing that. Uh, yep. And part of this channel, uh, I always say that. Uh, 75 to, or picking a degree that's going to earn you 75 to 80 grand, if not coming out as soon as possible, is going to be very important just because uh, once you start making 75,000, 80,000 dollars as a single individual, now if you have a family with kids and a spouse or something like that, that's a completely different calculus. Mm-hmm. But if you're making 75 to 80 grand a year just with you, now you can, you know, you can live in a nice neighborhood, you can. Uh, you know, live comfortable, enjoy life a little bit, maybe going on a trip or two throughout mm-hmm. the year, but you're still going to have fifteen, twenty thousand dollars left over to be able to invest at the end of the year. And we'll talk mm-hmm. about the importance of uh, investing in uh, uh, a little bit later. So that's why I'm, I'm not necessarily against going to college, but you have to go there with the intention of getting a degree, getting a degree that's going to allow you to make uh, at least seventy-five to eighty grand. Now, thankfully. It's a lot of degrees that you can get, especially in this, you know, technology and engineering, where you're going to come out making hundreds of thousands of dollars, eat at least a hundred grand, which now you know you can do something with as a single individual. But I guess going back to to the to the college thing, three things that I think another three things that, as to why I think college is important is because a lot of times, like you said, you know, you're staying with your parents in high school and. You, you're not as disciplined, you're not as responsible, mm-hmm. you're not as accountable. But when yep. you go to college and everything is on you, uh, now that's when you're going to get that responsibility uh, or you're going to you know, be hopefully be more responsible, you're going to be more disciplined doing the things that 
you need to do and have to do without somebody being in your ear. Because again, even with football, and thankfully I always had this, even in high school, I was able to develop this, getting up five o'clock in the morning on my own and having my mom take me to workouts and stuff like that without her having to get me up or without people having to tell me to come come do mm-hmm. it. Uh, football players, a lot of the times, uh, they still fail in that regard as it relates to being disciplined, being responsible, just because you're on a football team. Uh, yeah, you have a, a, a workout, you have a schedule, a set schedule that you have to follow day in and day out. But you no, know, these a lot of football teams they have people checking in in the rooms with the with the athletes or uh, yeah. you know calling the athletes, making sure they're going to workouts and things like that, just because they're not as disciplined or they're not as responsible. Whereas with me, I, would, I already had that uh, right. in high school. But that's something that if I didn't have, uh, and most athletes, you know, they kind of developed in college, you're going to develop some responsibility. You're going to de- develop some discipline. So I think between discipline, uh, between uh, getting a, a being attention, intentional with your degree path, and I think the third thing is networking. Those are the three things why I think college is important. Yeah. All, all my friends and people I you know, communicate with and converse with today, uh, all of them, or most of them I should say is people I met in college or in law school. So can you talk about that a little bit as far as uh, the importance of college from a networking perspective? And uh, is that something that you knew going in that, okay, I can really kind of leverage the network and really be intentional about who I'm surrounding myself with and communicating with, or is that just something that just kind of happened to uh, uh, something that you kind of developed as you got to, to Michigan State? All right, man. So I think you said a lot of good things. And one thing, I mean, earlier on, you said, uh, like, no disrespect to people who got basket weaving degrees. I just think that I don't think that's disrespect. I think that that's just facts. You go Mm -hmm. to college, if you do anything with no intention, like, I'm not going to say you're going to have a a bad outcome, but your outcome is not going to be like, what what they say in Alice in Wonderland, she asked which way to, you know, he asked, she asked which way to go. He said, well, you know, if you don't care where you're going, it don't really right. matter which path you take. And I know I butchered that, but, you know, all the Alice in Wonderland fans so know what I'm talking about. Right, right. But the point is, you just go to oh, I'm going to college. I'm in college. What do I do? I don't know. Just pick something. All right, just pick something. Now you end up where you end up not being intentional and not being aware in life. It's not just college. Just doing that in life is a problem, right? Because, again, it don't matter if you don't, like, you basically say, I don't care where I end up. I'm just going, you know. You know, I'm just going with the flow right. until something happens. Yep. And then, oh, dang, maybe I should have, would have, could have did something. Um, to your points in terms of college, I, th- I mean, those are, are all very strong points. Again, uh, so I'm going to go into the whole whether like college or not. So this is, I think, speaks to the majority of people because, you know, a lot of people, like you got to get bit by a bug if you're going to, you know, like I'm gonna start a business. Like I'm not one of my mentors. Yeah, and I told you about. He made a million dollars when he was 18. He was making more than his teachers in high school. Right. He didn't go to college, right? So you got to begin with the end in mind in anything that you do, right? So we talking about intention going to college. Okay. Well, what does the end goal look like, right? So if you're and that's the these are basic fundamentals that I think it should be at least a semester or at least two, maybe a couple years of in in high school is to to be able to think about what the like the actions you're taking and why you're taking them and what the ultimate goal is because if you get the if you if you work from the backwards from where you want to go then you have a much greater probability of getting there and a lot of people again i'm in college what do i do well my friend said they he said communication was you know easy so i'm gonna do that or i just it's about who you're around so we started talking about networking right and you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with so in high school if you're not intentional about that and you don't have counselors and mentors and things that like that are actually pouring into you, whether it's your parents, family, like just, you know, like people that's around you, you're going to kind of just flock on what they do. A lot right. of, like, I, like I said, I went to Cass. A lot of people went to Michigan State because everybody went to Michigan State if you went to Cass. That's just what it was, you know. Yeah. All right. And then people go there. And, oh, what degree are you getting? Well, I'm not sure. I'm just going to start taking the general classes and blah, blah, blah. What you going to say? Oh, man, I'm just doing And then you just go with the flow. Yeah. And next thing you know. Um, I got a basket weaving degree, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. You know, and then you, you like, oh, how did I do it? And I don't mean to laugh like I'm laughing at someone, but that's literally what it is. I'm yeah. after here, like, and you know, just, and I want to be respectful to your community, but I'm not, you know, I'm not the one, I don't like the, the fluff and the bullshit out, you know, it just is what it is. You know, yeah. if, 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 if you do, if, if two plus two is four, 
and you add two plus two, what you gonna get? You're gonna get four every time, every at time. least as far as in this community. So I, we just speaking factual at this point. And right. I want the community, you know, like you know, the people that's listening to this today, like it's not about being nice and whatnot, it's about getting the result that you wanna get. Now those components, cause I know I go on tangents, um You're cool. Net- right. Talk. right 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 so net networking 100 percent. i mean I, I think so yes networking will happen whether you intentional about it or not but if again as i just mentioned if you are intentional about it you're going to be like more you're going to be aware right once you once you pay attention to something you start to notice it everywhere so just by going to college with the intent yeah. of like man you know, like, for example, me and Dave, like, I already know, I was like, man, this dude, he got a lot going on. Like, I remember when I met you, like, I'm like, okay, he on the football team, like, like, so Dave probably ain't bragging on, on here too much, but he was always one of the smartest dudes in the class. I ain't going to say smart, but definitely the hardworking. Yeah, so sure. whether you want to call it smart or hardworking, so his grades was always on point. And you look at him and say, look, I got, I got a workout at 5 a.m. I got another workout later in the day. I'm probably one of the only guys on the team that actually get a real degree. I got a mechanic, I got an engineering degree, so you can't just be sleeping in class and having somebody take tests for you and all this stuff. I got to do all of this stuff. And on top of it, I'm actually doing the work. I'm not over here like, oh, you know, can you help me with this? Or, I mean, you, everybody get help, but, oh, you know, you're trying to finesse your way through college somehow. So when I met Dave, I'm like, dang, he got, like, he made me want to step my game up because I'm like, man, I, what am I doing? I ain't doing, like, okay. I got all I gotta do is go to class. He just right. boom. I think you didn't you work at the Fizz or you was working too, right? Yeah, yeah, at the physical. Yeah, as well. I didn't have. See, I didn't have to work in college. I never had a job in, in college. Like I know I did my second or third year. I think I finally got a job, and I didn't even have it the whole like it was just something to do really, right? So the whole point is, I'm looking. Like, he got this, that, and the other going on, and I'm asking him for help, man. Let me. Hey man, what what answer do you get? <laughs> you know what I mean. So I'm just being one. So so that's Dave. So Dave always been a hard worker. So you mentioned it earlier about being on the football team. Some guys just didn't have that get up and go. Right. Which you still got it even to this day. So that is probably just something that come nat well natural through your upbringing, whatever. But that's a part of you. So I always looked up to Dave for that because I'm like, man, what am I doing over here? But the point is, so going back to networking. So when I saw that, I'm like, man, they probably somebody to like to be around, not just on some, oh, he can help me with class. Right. Like, he can always help. But, you know, he, he cool. We can hang out. You know, he just, he getting, he got his stuff together. I think at that point, your GPA was probably what, 3.5 or something, 3.2. Yeah, no, yeah, for so sure. just so y'all know, I was one of the, like the, the, the two, <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was one of the 2.3 students. I was hey, like, but what you say? See, you get, uh, see, you get degrees. That was that was me when I heard that, and I still. <laughs> so look, I know we out here. I don't want to like just uh, deter too much, but that was me. And I'm like, dude, he got all this going on, and I know it's not that he's just naturally just smarter than me. He working hard. He's studying for the stuff. And he getting it done, and he like he doing it. So he made you know. So the point is networking. So you see somebody like that, it's like man, that's you know, I'm I'm gonna stay with uh, I'm I'm gonna, I gotta click with Dave. We've been knowing each other down there, what, 15 years almost? Yeah, for sure. So, so, but that, so the point is intention. So at that point, it just, I, and I wasn't like, and I'm not saying that at that point, I was just like super intentional, but I'm just saying that's what happened. It was just common sense for me. i like, man, I need to stop hang, hanging with some of these knuckleheads right. and, and, and get with somebody and actually do what they do. You know what I mean? Outside of just school. Cause I had people who I knew in class, like, oh, he's a smart person right. and I need to hang with him for this class. And then that semester is over with and I don't talk to him no more until they're in another class. Oh, he's smart, right? But they was somebody I could deal with outside of that. And, and, and I think that's a good point. Cause again, networking is just more than, than identifying people who are smart and who can help me this semester or with this class. Uh, yep. Did you go into these different situations saying, okay, this is somebody that even after college, because that's what really networking is, is being able to have them in your network long term, hopefully. So uh, mm-hmm. did, did you were you able to identify people? Because I mean, I, I'm not sure if this was happenstance. I mean, I, I was a little bit more intentional about it, but I'm not sure if other college students are intentional about it or if it just come as a happenstance as far as identifying people and saying, OK, he's smart or I want to kind of click with him for this class or to get through college. Uh, especially if you have the same degree, uh, degree path, but were you identifying these people uh, from a network perspective to say, okay, no, this is going to be somebody we I can lean on or we can lean on each other or we're going to be able to kind of iron, iron sharpen the iron thing even after college? 
See, I didn't have enough uh, uh, forethought for that either way, right? So when I'm saying, so I, I didn't have any intention really, right? Okay. Like when I say when I say intention, I mean like strategically. Sure. So when I, like for those individuals who I thought was smart and I was going to hang with them for that one class or whatever, or whenever I had class with them, I didn't go into that like, oh, I'm only hanging with this guy. I'm going to use this person because right. they're smart. I was just like, oh, he's smart. I'm going to hang with him. Oh, you know, we ain't got nothing else in common. The only thing we had in common was the class. No more class. All right, see you later, man. And then I see another class. So it wasn't like that. And then even the intention, like with something like like somebody like yourself, I wasn't sitting there thinking like, man, Dave gonna be somebody cool. We can hang out at the cop. I had I had zero, right? It was just like you know, he cool. And then we kept clicking because we, you know, we had uh, similar interests and things like that. But uh, but should me, people be thinking about that or going into it with that mindset, especially these days with the internet and things like that? Yeah. Uh, should people be doing it because it, it's not even about at least from my perspective? Okay, this person is smart. It's just about hanging around with good, good, solid people, people with good character, yeah. people who are doing something in life. So obviously, if you have somebody who get an engineering degree, get in uh, a nursing degree, get in some type of technology degree. You're, and, and they're you no, know, they have the character to go along with it. It's just like hell. Yeah, mm -hmm. let, let's just continue to see where this goes, type thing. Uh, 100%. 100%. Uh, and kind of, you know, give a little bit more time to that person as opposed to the people who aren't doing things, and you never know what's going to happen because, you know, uh, Rami, who I'm hoping to have on at some point, or uh, yourself, people who, you know, I identify very early on as having good character. Uh, but also, you know, having, you know, both of you guys were getting an uh, engineering degree. So it's like, okay, uh, they have that component as well. And they're going to, so they're going to be able to make a good living. And uh, mm -hmm. along with the engineering degree, uh, I mean, along with the character, let's how to just continue to keep the relationship going and see where it goes. Yeah, hundred percent. So that's the, that's the whole point. So if you go into from a networking perspective with the intent, if you just take that one thing away, I'm going to college next summer or whatever, next winter. And I'm going in with the intention of I need to be mindful of who I'm surrounding myself with. Right. That's that's it. Right. And it's not always black and white, but you just want to be intentional about it. And I think uh, more directly, you just like you just you just said this, but more directly, it's about putting yourself in the environment to to be around it. So, for example, if, if I go to school for engineering, probably going to be I mean, the longer I'm in the first year, second year, third year. The, the people that are still in engineering are going to be more and more serious about engineering and had that opportunity or whatever chemistry, et cetera. If you want to be yeah. a chemist or whatever, the, whatever it is, you surround yourself. Or again, you go surround yourself with a bunch of people who's getting a communications degree and not, or, or something that at the end of the day, that whatever, it's a history degree where it's not like you're going to be with those like-minded individuals and you're going to start to pick up those thoughts and behaviors through osmosis as well. So that's the big part of networking is just, placing yourself in the right environment and doing that on a more niche, niche like like doing that as deep, like filtering it more. So for example, I could be anywhere in the world, but I'm in college. Okay, sweet. So I just eliminated a whole bunch of BS. I'm not in Detroit. Okay. All right. All right. I'm not just in at Michigan State. I'm where, let's say the, you know, the, the difficult, I'm in the STEM programs. Okay. I just eliminated a whole bunch of noise around people who's not really doing it. And not to say there's people that's not in that, it's all about BS, it's just yeah. you getting focused, right? And at that age, it's difficult to know exactly, like, cause you may not know I wanna be an engineer or whatever, wanna be in business and all this stuff. But the point is just putting yourself in these better environments and doing doing so and just being aware and, and moving with intention. I mean, that's that's a big piece. I mean, you mentioned the other couple of point, uh, key points as far as college, as far as learning the discipline, um, like just like, have, like like coming up as far as growing up, just learning like I got to grow up type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I think that is important as well. And then obviously choosing something that's that's going to be like begin with the end in mind. I'm just going to leave it at that, so that way you know where you're going. But at the end of the day, so that's that's if we're in the college universe, you know this about me. So my whole thing. So I was in college for, and you may want to go deeper in this. I was in college for like uh, like six years, six and yeah. a half years. And part of that was, so we talked about the whole C's that get degrees thing. That's not just total like BS. It's, it's partially because I've actually, I was one of the students that like I worked, like I had co-ops, paid co-ops throughout the, my entire college, right? That's why part of the reason why it took me so long to graduate is because I was one semester on, one semester off yeah. most of the time, right? And while I was doing that, I was one semester on learning, one semester on getting hands-on experience in the field that I would want to go into, 
right? Yeah. And every last one of them told me the same thing. Like, man, I'd much rather have you who has been coming here every summer, who knows everything, has been doing that for three years, and like can come in and actually be helpful, then I get these 3.99 GPA guys yeah. who fill out a resume and they got zero experience, they don't know anything, and they come on, they just book smart. Go ahead, I know you want to. But, but no, yeah, and I was gonna say, man, you left out an important part, and I think this is mm -hmm. kind of going back to even being intentional, man. Uh, doing those co-ops, doing those internships, you're getting paid a lot of money. So it's not even just, I mean, experience is a big part of it, but yep. uh, you know, I know a lot of times people were doing and this like blew my mind and I understand kind of an kind of older, older generation. They're like, that was a thing where you just worked for free over the summers and that was like that. And it was like, at this point in time, yeah. we're making, we're making good money doing internships and co-ops oh, yeah. in addition to getting experience. So, but that yeah. was through the engineering path. I think a lot of times where there's other technology areas, I know when I was in law school, I thought engineer was getting money. I, in law school, they paying two, three grand a week as a law right. student uh, doing a right. summer associate position is in addition to getting experience. So I think that's another big thing that I, I just wanted to throw throw that in there because uh, that's another part of it. You're you know, making some good money uh, doing these co-ops and uh, summer you know, internships. Yep. I was always intentional about the money. Everything else was, <laughs> everything else kind of just, I might have missed some, but I was always intentional about the money. So right. that was the big thing. And that was, wasn't an easy decision because, again, I'm missing semesters of school. So not only are like my quote unquote peers, like just like blowing past me type of thing, you know, you missing out on stuff that you want to do in college. You're missing on this party or this event and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, as Dave just said, we, we make, you make really good money. This is how you're able to, just so I mentioned earlier, I didn't have to work in college. That was part of the reason why I had money from when I work in this job and I'm getting yeah. this experience. And that actually ended up setting me up for like the next like 10 years after that, just because I had that summer intern and then went into a co-op rotation and just been getting paid more and more every time I returned, gaining the experience. And just to point this out, uh, Dave, you know, I say this all the time, exceptions made for the exception. Yeah. And that's how it works. So I ended up, I was actually still in school full time uh, and I actually got hired full time yeah. right? as an engineer. Now, they didn't give me the engineering title, but I was doing the engineer work. It was like a technician or something, but I was making a lot more than everybody else that I, that I right. had class with. And they, they said, you can do both. We're going to hire you full time. And as soon as you graduate, we're going to switch you over because the experience was key. So the whole college experience is where we're talking about here. And this is like, I, I mean, if I had to do it again, that'd be part of my framework. If I, like someone was like, I'm going to college. Okay, we talked about what path you should choose. Definitely looking into getting an internship. And when I went to intern, all I did was add so much value. It started talking about like Napoleon Hill and laws of success. All I did was give so much value that that like, you know, it's, a, it's, it's you reap and you sow. So I was just, you know, I don't know, I forget which one is which, but the whole point is I was just putting in the work, right? I was yeah. just putting in the work, adding value to the point where they, one summer, I was, it was random as ever. And it was just like, you want to work here? I was like, uh, sure. It's like, okay. And like for, and just like I said, exceptions made for the exceptional. And usually at this place, it takes, I think, someone on board somewhere between like three and four months or maybe three and six months. Man, they, from the, I still remember, it was the beginning of August, they asked me, and by the beginning of September, I was in the system, everything done, everything was processed complete. All the check, all the boxes was checked, right? All I had to do was, I didn't have to do anything. I just kept doing the same thing I've been doing and right. I was getting paid. So, so. Getting paid uh, a lot yeah, more so, money. Oh yeah, yeah, that was it for doing the exact same work just because, right. so we started talking about the principles of success. So a lot of times you have to put in before you able to reap, right? Before, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? So you have to like, uh, like you don't always get paid initially, right? And I'm not saying you don't, I mean, you gotta know your value, but sometimes you don't get paid in the beginning. In this case right. I did, but you had to put in the work and then you receive the reward thereafter. And it may not necessarily be as soon as you like, right? And that's just one of the, if you just look at, I like to always give the analogy of farming, right? You don't drop a seed in the ground, cover it with dirt, water it, yeah. walk away, come back tomorrow and say, where's my, where's my fruit, where's my harvest, right? Sometimes you gotta keep doing it. You're not getting any reward until X period of time passes. Yeah. No, I mean, and that's good because uh, even and I, I just, you know, uh, got my first big client. I'm talking about Fortune, uh, my billion dollar client uh, at the law firm. And uh, I mean, this is a relationship that uh, went back 
10 years ago. So, and it just kind of, you know, uh, paid dividends over the last year or so, but the relationship started or that seed, as you would say, was planted 10 years ago. So, yeah. and it was just kept watering. And again, I wasn't kind of rushing things and it was just an opportunity 10 years later. And it, it just, it, it, it worked out in the end, but no, I think yep. that's absolutely true. And that's absolutely a good point to say, Hey man, these relationships or uh, these opportunities, uh, it, it may take some time and maybe six months or maybe six years, but uh, you know, at some point, uh, as long as you know, you're doing what you have to do, things are going to, uh, are going to pay off. Exactly. And, I, and this and last thing I want to mention as far as the, the whole college thing. So even so good things came out of it. And I just talked about yep. one of the things and that set me up to be able to do that. But I mean, to this day, like I said, Dave, you know this, like if you stuck on going to college and we can start talking about the investing side, but I honestly, when I look back, I always look back and say, man, if I would have started, even if I only went to college for just a year, but even if I, like, if I didn't go, but I started on the path that I started on when I was 22 or 23, then I feel like I'll be much more further ahead in life. Right. Uh, fi financially, business wise, much more success. Be but that's it's still it was, but it's no just exact trade off. You still gonna knock your head, etc. Yeah. But again, that came from me not knowing. I didn't begin with this end in mind. I had something else. I was just going with the motions or what right. uh, what was always told to me. And uh, so it's not not regretful, but definitely I, I like I, I look at that as. Like I didn't have an option. It was college, and that was it. That was pretty much right. it, which was a good thing. My parents instilled, but sure. now that I know that there's actually other options that potentially are more fruitful and actually may make more sense for a lot of people when right. you start talking about going to business, entrepreneurship, investing, etc. No, and I think that's a good point. I think, like you said, if uh, I mean, again, it's kind of entered in the social media age, so it's kind of difficult to not see what else is out there or not know what else is out there. But if you're just stuck yeah. with okay. I need to go to college or I have to go to college or even I want to go to college, then uh, I guess I think if I can surmise it, we're saying that, hey, that's cool. Just be intentional when you go there as it relates to your degree, as it relates to <clears throat> how you're networking, how you're moving through college and just not just go there and yep. they have a you know, big party or whatever. And But no, just you know, be intentional yep. as you're moving through college. But uh, also, you know, we talked about that. He's out there. And I, and I think I, I think that's that. a good transition to move into those opportunities because you yourself once you graduated, I know, like you said, you were doing full time uh, at the at the company you were working with. And you were doing full time in school, but at some point you graduated school, and you transitioned to just full time at the job. And again, you know, you were very successful at it. You made a lot of money. Uh, so at, at that point, uh, just being young too, at that point, what, what did you always kind of had this hunger for more? Because at some point you start up a business, uh, mm -hmm. or you kind of get into different things. Uh, so what was, what did that, I guess, hunger come from? Where did that appetite come from to say, okay, I'm making some good money. Uh, and I'm talking about you know, over a hundred grand type good money at this mm -hmm. uh, company. And, uh, but it's something else out there and it's something else that I want to do. How, how did all that come about? Oh, so that's a good question. So let's get deep into that. So for me now in hindsight today, looking back at it, I think back to when I was like maybe 11 or 12 and it wasn't like again at these times you're not super clear but i never really wanted to um like a desk job that wasn't like in my mind like i wasn't maybe saying that so perfectly clear at that time but it was never just a desk job where i was like man i want to do here like that was never the end goal right and it, it wasn't like one day i just woke up it's like oh i'm at a desk job i'm not living my dream no again i told you guys earlier i was always intentional about the money right so for me I'm, at this point, I've learned, I've, I'm, so I'm going through college, some, I did learn how to learn, and I learned, like, I got, you know, some good, like, good positions to be able to, uh, like, just learn fundamentals, and one of them was beginning with the end in mind, right, you start talking about mentorship and stuff, which will come here in a moment, but beginning with the end in mind, so just naturally, one of my thought processes, and I wasn't even doing this intentionally, one of my thought processes was, like, okay, I'm here working, um like i'm getting paid now what does it look like i work here for 30 plus years i probably could have worked for 35 years there um i'm already making good money right now if i want to like you know we behind so we say that like again i'm just about to keep it 100 so we we 400 years behind you know so i'm looking at it like i'm thinking about it this way because i already told you when i was in middle school 
I was, you know, I'm trying to make money on my own so I don't have to be a burden. But now I'm not crazy. I know that people get older. So, all right, you can't, mom and daddy can't work forever. You know what I'm saying? All right. And then I got a brother who got some mental disabilities. So, okay, that's another thing. So I'm just looking at like, all right, this is going to take care. So I'm like, man, if I'm even, if I'm making good money, like that's not going to be, and then I still want to live a life like that is worth that, that I think to, that is where I want to be. And is this it? All right. Probably not. And not only is it not it, I never, so I never talked about this yet, but I never really enjoyed engineering. I mean, right, right. No, for sure. And there. I think you and I were very similar in that way because it yeah. was always something that for me, I always kind of fell into and it made sense from a money perspective and things mm -hmm. like that. But it wasn't like I was, you know, all my life, I'm like, okay, I need to, I want to be an engineer. I mean, again, I was able to kind of make it all work and it seemed like you were able uh, to do that as well. But uh, that's mm -hmm. an interesting point that you never kind of really enjoyed. Yeah, ne never enjoyed it. It was just something that you, I was told to do and next thing you know, I was doing it and then you get lost in the sauce and you just, you just doing it. Like, and the reason why I say that, because there's guys who, who are legit engineers. Like, they right. love it. Like, yeah, they love you, it. I mean, sure. you know this. Like, they, they in it. I was never that person, right? It was just like engineering was always a means to an end. So now you adding up, okay, I'm not super passionate about it. Yes, I, it's a means to an end for right now. But ultimately, at the end of the rainbow, I'm going to be in a place where I'm, at, I'm on the wrong rainbow. Dang, I didn't mean to get to this pot of gold. I wanted to be somewhere else. Right. right? So... So even before I graduated, I already, like, I had discovered this. This is just from, like, learning from different mentors. Uh, I had bought programs and just learning and reading different books. So actually, that time when I mentioned that I, before I graduated, I was hired in, I also started, you know, getting into real estate and learning the whole business thing, which, you know, that was a whole separate education. That was like a whole separate degree, just me learning those things there. Um, so uh, anyway, getting back, to, uh, getting back to the point at that time, so... All right. So like that, that was where I was at as far as like I'm making money. So at the time, mentally, I'm, I'm, do, I'm thinking I'm doing everything right. Right. So like, like Dave says, making good money. All right. Um, uh, I'm in school full time. So my day look, look like I'm um, up usually like five, five thirty, get up, go to work, maybe get out of work at three, or three thirty, four o'clock, depending on what's going on. Or I may work overtime or regardless, it was always go to work, go to school till whatever time I go to school till seven, eight o'clock. And then um, we do real estate sometime in between and do homes and stuff. So I'm juggling all these different things. And even though I'm making the money, I'm thinking I'm doing well. Like I'm still living in my own basement, right? It's not a finished basement. It's not a very lovely place to live. You know, we had, I remember we got the boiler with the pipes knocking and you got yeah, water yeah, hammer yeah. going on, basic floor done, the bed, like, I'm, like, that was it. That was everything right there, right? Would, would so, you call that your sacrifice period? Yeah, I would say yeah, I mean, because you were making the good money, so you could have got an apartment and did, you know, that thing. Easy. But you like, no, I'm going to still stay in this environment and kind of get to it. Yeah. Exactly. My my. So that was where I was living. So minimum, I think the only thing I was paying was a, a phone bill, really. Uh, that and then my car was like 12 years old. So I didn't have that's no how car. you know this was this was. I mean, again, we're still relatively young, but that's how you know this was back then where. I don't think I don't think a lot of people still have phone bills. Oh right, right, <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. So it was, you know, that's just what it was, man. So we was grinding. So the point is, so um, so at that point, it was just like, all right, I'm putting everything back into the business because I'm like, all right, yeah. I know that not because okay, and actually, so I didn't talk about this. So Dave actually the person who got me to get into real estate. I know we gonna get into business and all that, so I don't want to talk too much about it. But Dave was the one who got me into it because you had more guidance like you had some people in your family that would at least expose you to different things yep. you know whether it was like hey man you know you can make a lot of money in law or hey check you know you know this is what you can do in real estate or check this book out so me and dave just started reading books a couple books we had read quote unquote together i guess and it was like man that make a lot of sense yep. you mean you can make money and then it's actually a you can you no longer on this hamster wheel where you work get a paycheck and all the time there's something that you can do where you may have to work hard but ultimately, you get to a point where you don't have to work hard and keep paying you, and you don't have to be sixty years old plus to be able to enjoy. I was like, "Oh, that that's dope." So that's when we got into you know start getting into real estate and just really focusing on that. And I was just again, that's my sacrifice period. I'm sitting there doing everything, keeping all the money, like minimizing all the income, putting everything into real estate, and just grinding it through that point. Yep. No, that's man, that's good. And I think this is a uh, before we kind of get off into like. Kind of starting a business because I, 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 you know, I know we have to get to 
kind of running a business while working for the company and kind of that, <laughs> right. that crossroad right, that right, you had that was, to get to. And uh, right, but funny. even before that, you're talking about the mentorship. I think you brought up a good point for me. And I did engineering. I did law. I'm a patent attorney because I had a cousin who uh, is still a big mentor in my life who, as I was kind of coming up and enrolling into Michigan State University uh, as a freshman and undergrad, he uh, was telling me, hey, you like math and science, do engineering. You can always go to law school. And one of the other big things that he did before I was coming in was uh, he had some rental property in uh, Lansing. Michigan State is in East Lansing, Michigan. So uh, he had some rental property in Lansing. And I, I, was, I stayed with him that summer before enrolling into Michigan State. And, uh, man, we used to go to his rental properties, and that blew my mind because at that point I'm like, what? You can own rental property? Like, right, it was right. something That's that crazy. I just, it just <laughs> never... I never fathom, and uh, I always kind of right. took a mental note of that because, again, I was playing football. I was about to enroll in Michigan State. It was a lot of things going on at that present moment that I obviously, at least I thought, and which this is another thing that, knowing what I know now, I could have still did real estate. I would have been a lot further along if I would have started back in 2008 when I enrolled at Michigan State yeah. as opposed to thinking that I can't do it because I have a lot of stuff going on. But anyway, I had took a mental note of that, said I'm going to come back to that, and uh so, uh, so just having mentors, and that's just one of the mentors who played such a big part in my life, and I have other, had other mentors along the way, uh, and still have other mentors that I talk to in different th uh, for different things. But how important was mentorship for you, whether it was engineering, whether it was, uh, you know, business, and uh, the, a lot of the, the, the good things that you're doing? Uh, how was how did mentorship play a part of it? And can you speak a little bit about having a mentor or having oh, yeah. one or more mentors I mean, you know, coming up? So that's awesome. So that's, I mean, that's, again, when I do like talks and whatever, when I'm speaking on stage or whatever, that's one of the things, that's the key to success. So if somebody younger than me, or if I go back to my young self and I was able to like give like a couple pieces of information, that's definitely one of them. That's so simple, but I was never taught. I didn't realize that principle until I was almost 23 years old, mm -hmm. right? That if you want to know the path ahead, ask someone coming back or who's just further ahead on that path. If your goal is to be here and you get mentored by somebody who's up here, like they, they make, they make your goals look like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that now you're able, now you're going to start skipping steps, right? You're going to be able to like, it start, you start to learn and you get, you like, you like, you don't have to bump your head. Like was it Abraham Lincoln? Someone said, maybe it's Ben Franklin. I forget. But the point is they said, you, you learn something for everyone to meet, even if you learn what not to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So but when you learn from somebody who, who's telling you what not to do, that's again, that's a mind. That's a that's a minefield that you are able to navigate and you don't have to necessarily worry about, OK, he just said do it this way. So I'm going to go and do it that way. And this is all time back in easy even networking, because personally, from like, uh, I guess maybe an altruistic perspective, I didn't necessarily have the mentors. But so again, I was hanging with you and you had the mentor. And you, you know, we talking, you talking about all yeah. real estate. I remember, I, I still remember the 1031 exchange book, which is funny. Yeah. We read, we read a random 1031 exchange book, which is, which is cool. But uh, that's what I was like, oh man. And then you get around people that make you want to level up, right? So if I'm at this time, okay, I'm working at DT. I got hired in, quote unquote, I got the job, right? But me and them, me and Dave, I was kind of know like, oh, that's cool, but you know, all right, that's cool. It's not like we sitting on that, like, man, right. hey, that type of thing. So, all right, it's cool. And actually me and Dave were working together and he's telling me about, oh, I'm, I'm about to go to law school. You know, I'm talking about, he said, oh, I get to law school and I got the engineering degree. And it was funny. I remember you talking about it. Like, you know, cause a lot of people talk and they just talk about blah, blah, blah. And right. actually, you know, it was two, three years later and he did. He was like, oh no, I'm about to do it. And then boom, a few weeks later or a month later, oh, you know, I just applied, you know, you know, I just got accepted. You know, Michigan Law School, Michigan State Law School. I'm like, dang. So you point is you get around yourself, you're networking with people who is doing things, and that make you look around. You like, well, shit, what am I doing? I got to do something because, right. you know, we I, I got I got to level up too, right? So anyway, you had brought the uh, the real estate stuff to me, and I was like, man, that that actually was pretty interesting to me. And I started digging deeper into that. And we both started digging deeper into yeah. that. But 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 the, so again, that's time to the, so for me, the mentorship that I had initially came through uh, through network, which is primarily through you as it pertains to what we're talking about here. And then at this point, like we're getting a lot more like social, right? Social media and stuff like that. Through ha and actually sometimes, you, 
uh, what do you call it, happenstance, or some people call it serendipity or whatever. One of my uh, cousins just happened to um, mention a book to me. It was all through a book, apparently. So mentors, books are your mentors too, but it's, it's a book as a man thinketh. And it's a good book that, you know, some of you guys may want to read. And I read it on YouTube. It was like an audible and it was only, it's a short book, only like maybe 45 minutes an hour. It's not that the book was, they had some good principles in it, but you know, YouTube has this algorithm, right? Where, oh, you watch this, you may be interested in that. Right. And that actually got me tied to one of my first real, well, actually my second mentor, not, uh, my first mentor was Phil, but like my second mentor to like really learn like how to learn and the business fundamentals and how you can actually apply fundamentals in business to almost anything. And it came through a YouTube ad. Uh, a lot of people know Ty, so I won't name drop, but the point is, um, that was like it, like it was targeting me and i got with him and it was like it helped me like basically really start to scale and understand all the different things i was missing so mentorship is yeah. very important and that's just a small piece of it uh the point is if anyone asks me i think that's one of the critical uh points to success in anything oh, yes yeah, i think even going back to the network piece of it and you have brought up a very good point to say hey when you're networking with the right people and these people are hungry for knowledge and to do better and things like that they uh all, all the things that they're kind of learning and their mentors it's almost like you guys are sharing mentors so now you have this infinite um, infinite amount of mentorship uh, because yeah. you're getting mentors through your network uh which I mean obviously uh kind of worked out especially in our situation so then i guess moving on so now you 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 start a business and you talked a little bit about okay phil who uh, uh i know he i think he was down in florida Mm -hmm. He kind of was uh, a program that you got a part of that kind of really taught you a lot about real estate uh, and you were able to make some money uh, implementing his uh, uh, his teachings, which was good. But then as it relates to having a business and having uh, kind of pr uh, systems and processes, how did all that come in apart? Because a lot of people, they open up a business and they start doing things and like okay you don't have a business if you don't have systems and processes and like kpis sure. and things like that that metrics that you're uh measuring uh consistently to see the performance of your business so how did all that come into play uh and how what what, some, what are some of the things that you do uh did to kind of help you uh kind of set up your systems and processes and to uh grow the business because again you do have you are one of the top performers uh in uh kind of real estate wholesaling and you know you're doing a lot of other things so uh from a business perspective uh how did all that come into play all right so so excellent question so i mean the short answer to that is networking um and i'm gonna go deeper into that but you just so we don't like gloss over so people can get the background so what i did when we first started after i read those books you know i started looking for i didn't know it but i started looking for mentorship i knew i knew enough to know that I want to get into real estate and I want to be the one making 50,000 in a month or two and all this other stuff. But I didn't know what I didn't know. And being an engineer, like I said, it taught me how to think. So I knew I thought in processes and I had, you know, factors of safety, like that's the way my mind worked. So I wanted to like, okay, I knew enough, like, man, I want to get into it, but what do I go out and do? I can go out and do X. I can go out and do Y. I didn't know where I want to get into Right. So that's why I went to YouTube University, started listening to different people. And there was a few out there that I was like, OK, I resonate with this person. I resonate with that person. And ultimately, I just select one. That's what we're talking about, Phil now. And he had that whole thing where he taught me how to invest, where it's like, OK, you can do this. You can do that. Here is how to do it. So I learned how to be an investor. Getting to Dave's point, we started talking about how to build a business. So now we're talking really three and let me see, really like three years yeah, I would say maybe three and a half years in, right? Because up until that point, I was just a one-man show. And I, it's funny, when I speak at conferences, I tell people this. Uh, so the point is, what what it happened, I joined a mastermind, right? So we'll talk about that. But when I, when I speak at conferences, I tell people, when I first joined, uh, which was one of the biggest things that helped me excel, joining these masterminds, quote-unquote networking. But when I first joined, I thought she was just an investor because I, I didn't know what I didn't know. So I knew all the stuff about real estate, but I thought, and, you know, you just being an investor. I didn't know that there was like, you had a role and responsibility. Like you had, oh, you got titles. Oh, you're a transaction coordinator. You're an acquisitions rep. You're a dispositions rep. You're an ops manager. I didn't know that. I thought, and I was doing everything, right? So me doing everything, 
okay, when I was talking to somebody, I was in one, I was wearing one hat and I was doing another, when I was doing something else, I was doing wearing another hat. I didn't know that. So the big thing for me is, so we started talking about it. Remember, I got a job at this point, right? So I'm making good money, excellent career. Everything is good as far as that is concerned. But the biggest question I had is like, all right, I'm making money, but when do I quit? Or when do I go full time? When do I, you know, get, retire out of this? You know what I mean? Uh, that, that's what's going through my mind. I'm like, how, how and when? And for me, I was like, because w- what really brought that thought, again, networking with my first mentor, it was somebody, another mentee of his who had just made like 97000 on, maybe it was ninety two, but 97000 on one deal, right? And he was done after that. He was like, I quit everything. I'm through. I'm all real estate, boom, boom, all sure. day, every day. He made it on one deal. And I think he made it in like two months, which... I'm like, yeah, that's, I mean, I'm correct. Congrats. Right. So now we start talking about, see, I'm not, I never, I, I never had a problem with like being a hater, right? Some people see, you know, other people do stuff and it's like, man, they got the natural tendency. Right. Like, man, I could do that. You ain't no better. And I utilize some of those thought processes to fuel me like, oh yeah, yeah if you sure. can do it, I can do it too. But I was truly happy. I was like, man, that's, that's awesome. But it, it made me uh, reflect on myself. I was like, okay, if I close that same deal, do I quit? And the answer was probably not because all right, you made that money. We're going to quit your entire career and not know where the next check coming from. And not you hustling, but you a hustler at this point. And that's, that was it. So for me, my question, like, how do I, how do I quit? And I started giving numbers. Is that 200,000, which I'd already made. I was like, Nope. Is it 500,000? I mean, that's a big number, but is that it? I was like, well, maybe, I don't know. But the, the answer wasn't in the money, right? The answers was in the system and processes as Dave was talking about. So the point is, Again, I started seeking mentors. I was like, man, I just got to, I don't know, something hit me. And it was like, I, got, I just got to get around some, like, more people that's doing what I'm doing. Start going to podcasts like this, which is why I commend Dave for starting this podcast. Because sometimes you're changing people's lives, right? And I just happen to go on podcasts. I'm clicking through. I don't know which ones I'm clicking through. And I hear there's one guy that's a little bit entertaining. He likes to sing on his podcast for whatever reason <laughs> with his daughter. Got the singing, part, singing part. Yeah, yeah. He on there just singing like, you know, like literally his voice is horrible, right? <laughs> But the point is, he made a statement. He was like, yeah, I flipped probably 120 houses last year. I never seen one of them. I probably work three, four hours a week and I do this podcast and that was it. You know, all right. He said, if I go to any one of my, he said, matter of fact, I did this one. He said, I picked up someone from the airport. They wanted to go and see, we went to one of the properties and nobody at the property knew who the hell I was. They looking at us like we crazy, you know, and this is my house, you know? And I was like, so I had two choices. I could be a hater, like, man, you, that ain't true. You, you know, you're, you know, whatever, man. Right. This is like just you, you, you selling, you selling snake oil. It's pipe dreams, or whatever, right? I could have said that, or I could have been like, man, clearly this guy knows something that I don't know, right. which is the path I chose, and I started following him more, studying him. He resonated with me, and just like I did with my first mentor. I mean, it's a, it's an opportunity. I mean, it's, it's value exchange. He didn't do this stuff for free. First mentor, I paid him, which it was a big deal, right? It was like I wasn't just like, oh, here you go. It was like a big deal. Like, man, I'm paying, I'm spending money. The first time was like three grand. I maxed my credit card out twice because, not because I ain't had the money, but because I thought it could have been a scam, all this type of stuff, right? That was my first mentor. This guy here, he wasn't just being, he didn't want to be a mentor. He was, he had a whole community of the top real estate investors in the nation. Right. So earlier you heard me mention about the top five people you spend the most time with, you know, you are who you surround yourself with, right? So I was like, oh, okay. And that was significantly more expensive. That was 25000 to join. And when I did that, I was like, I really got to make it now. Cause shoot, you know, that's a lot of money. I've never spent that much money. Right. And, but I was like, but then I remember specifically at this point, I had different mentors in business. So I was wise enough to think to myself, I was like, okay, they got top performers across the country in this group. Some of them are in Michigan. Either way, I'm going to be competing with the guys who are in Michigan. So at least I can learn the same stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that. that's, that's, you know, same stuff that they're learning so i joined and that's when i learned that the higher you go up the higher you go up the more giving people are right so you're getting around people i remember specifically these guys was hitting a million bucks a year they're in the same market and they helping me give me all these systems processes how they do this how they do xyz and we literally in the same market and we're supposed to be quote unquote competitors right so now we start talking about networking i'm with these individuals so we got to the point where i no longer had to be smart I no longer had to be the hardest worker in the room. I had to work hard, but I didn't have to, I didn't have to figure it out on my own and, and hold up some trophy to say, yes, I did this all on my own. 
Right. Very rarely anyone does. I was, I was with the, I, I joined the group and uh, like they're helping me and they are literally telling me like, if you want to do this, just take this. I didn't have to do anything. Just use this. Uh, okay. In school, I learned that that, you know, you're not supposed to copy. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's literally all they was doing. It's like, here, take this. Oh, you want to know how to do this? Do this, this. It was literally just giving it to me. So all I had to do was take all the answers and put them together the way that I wanted to put them together. And now no. I'm like, okay. And step by step, you get ahead. No, and, and that's, that's uh, you said a couple of things there that I kind of wanted to highlight. The first is, as you get higher and higher up, these people want to give information away. It seems like when you're starting at the bottom or just even within our community, mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of the African American community, uh, we have this uh, craft and the barrel mentality where we want to kind of keep each other down and not share information to allow mm -hmm. uh, us to eat. Which, uh, like we said, you have been finding out by experience uh, that, and the higher you go up, you're getting these different groups who people are hitting a million dollars a year. They want to give out the information. They're uh, they're excited or whatever you want to call it to get out the, give out the information as opposed to trying to keep the secret sauce to themselves. Uh, the second thing is, and this is a whole uh, part of the uh, reason for the channel is the, the big investment that you made, you know, 2025 grand uh, as part of this course or whatever to, to, uh, to just learn the steps and processes. And I think, again, you know, when you're making 40, 50 grand a year, it's just tough. You just don't have enough money to be able to invest yep. in yourself in that way. Whereas, Hey, if you're making 80 grand, if you're making uh, 75 grand as an individual, you can say, okay, well, you know what? Okay. I'm making 80 grand a year, but I want to, Maybe do something else I, I, or not necessarily do something else as far as quit your job and do something else full time, at least not at the beginning. But I want to invest mm -hmm. in other skills and invest in other things, uh, get information so that I can uh, you know, maybe do something in addition to doing my job or at least uh, at least at the start. Uh, but now, you know, you can invest that 15, 20, 25,000 dollars into uh, yep. some type of uh, uh, course or program or whatever the case may be that's going to pay dividends for you down the road. So I think those were two things yep. that I just wanted to uh, to highlight. Uh, so now I know kind of going over, going over an hour here and I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, can you maybe talk a little bit about uh, the mass mastermind groups? Because it seems like the, the things that you were just talking about are different programs and courses. And I think one of them may have been a mastermind group, but mm -hmm. can you hit on the importance of mastermind groups? Uh, I think Think and Grow Rich was in one of the books I think you may have referred to me by Napoleon Hill that I think that lays out the framework of what a mastermind uh, group is, but can you hit on wow. the importance of it in general and how uh, important it has been for your success and your growth? Oh yeah, hundred percent. So if you want to be successful, there's no point in reinventing the wheel. Nobody does it. And so, okay, what is a mastermind? This is a group of men or women with like-minded, like-minded individuals with similar goals who have one purpose, right? And, in, and sometimes it's to like, if you're in a business, it, everyone has the one goal of making the business reach its goal. Yeah. And sometimes in this case, it's just everybody in the same community who all has similar goals for themselves. And when you do that, and people are living in a state of abundance where like, it's not crab in a barrel. If, I, if you win, then that means I lose. No, if you win, great, because I'm a win too. Right. I, the more I help you, matter of fact, the more I'm a win. So when you have people with that mentality in the group, in this case, we, we call it a mastermind. It's like something happens when people start to gel, people start to click and opportunities, ideas, things start to come up that may have otherwise not been a, a, achievable. So it's the, a situation of one plus one equaling three or better, right? One plus one, so my, you know, maybe my algebra teacher wouldn't like that, but one plus one should always be more than two. And uh -huh. if it doesn't, it's a waste of effort, right? You want the, that all that means is individually okay, we are ourselves, but if we're going to come together, we should not come together and be doing what we could do individually, just a sum of it. It should be greater than that. Mm -hmm. And and even with the investment. So uh, Dave talked about like, you know, 25K here and I still spend substantially more than that now, but it's it didn't start with that. First thing was the mentality. First was like me buying a couple of books, a little program. I remember I was buying a program. It was only like 50 bucks. And it was like, man, it's a scam, blah, blah, blah. But I had, you know, uh, penny thoughts is what we call them, right? Where I'm worried about, am I getting scammed out of 25 bucks or $50 for this book that potentially can help me gain with their information? So that's where I started, right? And as I'm doing that and I'm investing time, I got to the point where I can, all right, I'm investing this $3,000, which it was a big deal. And I was really concerned about like, man, what, what am I doing? 
am I doing the right thing? Because I didn't have no clear path at this point. I'm on my own, right? So then after I did that, you know, me spending 50 bucks, 100 bucks on something, 200 off, it was like, you know, all right, what's, what's the information I can get? Is it valuable? Is it going to help me reach my goal? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. That became easy to do. Then over the years, now it's 25000 That was a big decision for me when I made it. It was like, cool, you know, I'm doing it, but... I mean, and then it gives you something called accountability. So that's why a lot of times stuff is you have to put money into it because you got to pay to play. Because a lot of times people, if you don't put, if you don't pay, people don't pay attention, right? Or people, it's not a big deal. People don't value it until so, you put and, a lot of money into it. And, now, it's funny because, uh, and, and sorry to cut you off, I want you to continue, but I was just watching this thing on Grant Cardone where he mm-hmm. says a lot of people reach out to him and say, hey, you know, we want to, I want to do business with you and, 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 and he said, hey, man, if you want to do business with me, let's do business. Uh, come to one of my events. Uh, spend the money, come to one of my events. Spend money to, 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 to I don't know, to, to get a program or whatever the case may be. So a lot of times, you know, I think as you're talking about uh, uh, coming into an event, uh, you know, paying money to play, uh, people take note, note of that. They, you know, really? just you saying you want to do business. It's like, okay, yeah, whatever. But paying 15000 paying $20,000 to come get a seat at the table, people take note of that. So I thought that was an 100%. interesting point. That's exactly it. You just you just said it. You eliminate yourself from all of the people that's on the street just coming up to you. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You got to do something to differentiate yourself. And if you put up some money, OK, you're a different. That's that's a like that's a differentiator right there. Right. And the more the money that is, usually the better rooms you in. So when I spent the twenty five thousand, all of a sudden me spending a thousand dollars or something on something. It's like, all right, OK, let's just do it. Right. It's a small decision. And it didn't just happen like overnight. But then exactly what you were saying. Once you spend that 25, it's like, okay, like look what room, like look, everybody else in this mastermind in this group spent the same $25,000. Right. So that means number one, they've already filtered themselves out of having some level of success. They all filtered themselves out of being a certain level of seriousness because they probably just not throwing it. Because at that time, I was actually already making a quarter million a year, but it was. That was still a lot of money to me at the time, right. you know, to spend it, like you got to like to just drop twenty five thousand like it's nothing. You got to make substantially more than that. Yeah. Right. So but the point is, people are in a group and I'm learning from it. So you actually eliminate yourself to the point like, oh, these are the people that's really doing it, or at least the people who are really serious about doing. it. And that's what I was able to do. And getting into that group literally within like the first I think the first quarter, maybe it was a quarter and a half. Um, I made back all my initial investment, started scaling the company up. Uh, I knew the framework of how to actually exit, you know, the nine to five because other people have doing it. And I knew how to, I got to hire people. I had all the systems and processes and I've been in that group for like since then. So it's been like five years. Yep. It's been like five years and I'm still in it, in that group. And now, you know, people look up to me and I, I help them with different things, but that's how we're able to scale. So I went from being a, one man show and and here here's the last thing i want to leave you guys with if i would have knew all of this when i started i probably wouldn't start it you know what i mean so because when i when i reason why i got into real estate was not only because dave put me on and he's like okay you can make money but i'm looking at other people saying the same things but they're right. like oh you can make quick money you could do this boom 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 three four months you can make fifty thousand if you know how to wholesale a deal or whatever and flip a property and stuff so that's what i'm thinking about it like that Man, when I got, I was learning all these, I didn't know about all these mental blocks and all these different things. So all that stuff that was happening, it was like, I'm pressing almost two years and I'm still like trying to figure things out. All right. So it, so if I would have knew that in the beginning, I don't know. I mean, I would like to say to that, yeah, I still, I, I make it through. I just suffered them two years or multiple years, but you know, that, maybe. No, you know? And, and I think that's, you know, for me, I, when you said that, I think going back to being younger, starting something when you're younger, because you just have more energy uh, to, to to kind of deal with the uh, ups and downs of it, as opposed to starting something at 40, 50, 60 years old, just because, you know, it's like, man, you, you're already kind of setting your ways and you don't have as much fight as someone who's 20, 30 years old, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that's a part of it. But the other thing I think is important to maybe not know everything that you know. Uh, at the beginning, because like you said, you may never start. Just think about if Steve Jobs or someone like that know all the BS he's going to have to deal with trying to get the iPhone or Apple off the yeah. ground. He, Now, some people probably still would have done it, but a lot of people, if they knew all the stuff they had to go through, uh, will have to go through, then they man, that would have that would have been a barrier for them to even get started. So it's almost exactly. good that at the beginning, you don't know all the information. Now, you're going to get 
some of the information just because you're going to read and try to educate yourself, but you're not going to know everything. You're still, like you said earlier, going to have uh, a moments that you bump your head and stuff like that. And you got to choose your heart. That's what I, so again, I'm speaking or I'm like coaching somebody or mentees, somebody's my mentees or whatever. You got to choose your heart. And what I mean by that is, guess what? And you gonna ha- you gonna have a heart, at least when I say I'm saying H A R D, hard, difficult. If something's gonna be difficult, but you have the power to choose what that difficulty is gonna be. All right. Let's say you want to be late. Like we can go back to the school, right? If you you can either study a little bit every day, learn it, take your time, put the energy in, so when the test come, you're ready for it. And it was hard for you to. Hey, I, I'm not going to this party, or I'm not doing this. I need to make sure I get my time in. That was difficult. But you chose that difficulty, uh-huh. and now the test come, and it's easy or easier. Or you could be the person that, all right, I'll make the easy decision in the beginning. I'm going to the party. I'm going out here. I'm doing this, that, and the other. And, oh, we got an exam on Tuesday, and today is Sunday night. Now I got to study. I'm up all night for two days straight, and I still fail the test. You, cho- you choose your difficulty, or it's going to cho- like be chosen for you. So in this case, in terms of business, I mean, again, and, and by the way, if people are like 40, 50, 60 years old, you're going to be the youngest you ever going to be again. So today is the easiest day to start on whatever no, that sure. may be. But choose your heart. You know what I mean? Like choose what your difficulty is going to be. Right. And, and you make, and again, like, again, I got started and I chose like, okay. And, and then that's where the power of mentorship comes in. That's why it's one of the keys to success. Cause it's going to be difficult. Even if you got somebody got the exact framework laid out and they give you the exact framework that they went through, you have to do it. And when you do that, you go, you, okay, you may not, it may be 10 landmines up to this point. And you may skip past all those 10 because you had a mentor. But guess what? It's one right here that was meant for you that he, that they didn't know about. So you still going to bump your head, but you just don't have to bump your head at every little at place. And that's where the mentorship right. come in, man. So, um, but yeah, man, I commend you for having the, the podcast and everything together. Because again, this stuff, this type of information, a lot of people, Again, it is made some people are gonna resonate hearing it from me, some people may resonate hearing it from someone else. Right. The principles you're gonna to start to see is like, oh, a lot of these people that same are thing. saying the same thing. They in positions I wanna be in and they all saying the same thing. And maybe time it's sometimes it just, you know, take a certain person to say it in a certain way. Right, for sure. No, yeah, and I and I, I agree with that. And I think uh we have uh this fallacy that I mean you have to be forty, fifty, you know, years old before you uh, you know, build up a good nest egg or, uh, you know, have a high net worth. And I, and I think in a lot of cases, those are true. But I think if you're intentional at the beginning, uh, now, don't get me wrong, I think wisdom come over time with experience. So I'm not going to mm-hmm. ever say that at 30s, early 30s, I have more wisdom than somebody who's 50 years old, just because they've been through a lot more stuff. So I, it's always something I think I can learn from that person. But I think uh, this is a different day and age when you're talking about, uh young people, 20s, 30 years old, making a lot of money uh, and living a good life. I mean, I want to have uh, a nice nest egg at retirement, but I also uh, want to have, uh, enjoy life and live comfortable and do a lot of different things, take care of the family uh, in my 30s, in my 40s. So mm-hmm. I think seeing it from younger people, I think that's going to really help out and resonate with a lot of other younger people. Uh, so no, I definitely appreciate you coming on. I think, man, it was a lot of good nuggets here. I know we're running out of time here. Uh, so I guess uh, two things. First, where can people find you if they want to get in touch with you, if they want to uh, learn from you, if they just want to follow you, see the things that you have going on? Uh, do, are you on social media? Do you have a website? Where can people get in contact with you? So good stuff. So you can contact me. So Facebook is just Philip Blake. Um, you'll see me on the picture. So, you know, I don't know. There's too many Philip Blakes. And then also Instagram you can follow me at Phil. And this is all. This is Philip with one L. So you can follow me at Philip underscore Blake underscore R E I. So real estate investor, um, and you can find me there. And uh, I'm actually doing a lot more active now. Historically, I didn't didn't done a lot on social media, but I'm I am more active there where I may be putting out content where I'm just telling people about business business principles, talking about real estate, dropping gems there. And uh, yeah, I mean, if that's something you're interested in, whether it's, you may not, right, real estate may not be the thing. I'm not trying to get people here to all you, everybody needs to do real estate. Some of you may already be doing it. A lot of people want to get into real estate. And, and again, so here's the thing. You don't actually have to go out and do everything, right? It comes to this thing of, of leverage. 
right? A lot of people hear real estate because they know real estate create the most millionaires and all oh, real estate is it. And if that's something that's interesting you, that's that's awesome. Maybe you should get into it. Maybe you want to host it. Maybe you want to flip. Maybe you that person like, look, I'm a professional and I'm already, I'm, I make X, Y, and Z. I'm doing well, but I, I want to invest in real estate, but I don't want to, like, I don't want to go out and do the work, right? Those are things that I can definitely help with because guess what? We help people who specifically, we call them our, 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 uh, our passive private money partners, where we actually may work together on deals where you leverage us, we do the work, and you actually get a larger return on the, uh, the capital that you have. Or, or like, I mean, we, this is a whole separate conversation. We can start talking about banks and how people put money in banks. Banks pay almost zero or, or not, and they take your money and they do exactly what you could do directly with us. Right. So it's, so it allows people that we start talking about wealth and financial freedom. It allows people to cut out the middleman, the bank, who is do what do it and do exactly what the bank is doing, and you making whatever uh, significantly more than what you would have otherwise. So it's but anyway. So Philip underscore Blake underscore REI, and um, you know just hit me up, message me, and I look forward to chatting with you. No, yeah, for sure. And I think I guess one thing to say, we'll definitely have you back because I I think we just scratching the surface as far as the business and things like that. We're going to put those uh, social media handlers in our description so people can kind of check them out and follow you, uh, message you if they want to get more information, if they just want to you know, be a part of the things that you have going on. And then for me, as somebody who I feel like I've been there from the beginning, man, I uh, just want to tell you that, hey, uh, man, you're, hey, you're doing it. Uh, you uh, have made a you have made a lot of progress. Like, and I remember when you right, talked about right. having the same car for 12 years of Monte Carlo and just over the years, man, just yeah. to go from that to the Lincoln, to the Beamer, to the Range Rover. Now, you know, you're in the G-Wagon. So it seems like I've been there <laughs> from the beginning and have seen right. the progress over the years. And I uh, just want to, uh, you know, pay my respects and say, uh, man, hey, you're doing it and uh, uh, you're, you're growing. And I appreciate uh, just kind of being a part of, uh, you know, you know, my circle and having an impact on me just because, uh, you know, even you, know, you kind of preached that first mastermind group to me. And, man, I, I made that large uh, uh, investment in it. And like you said, uh, man, it paid off, you know, five, six X uh, over the years just with getting the information, getting the systems and processes, and then just being a part of someone else's network of like-minded people who can help you out and expand the area or the, the, the footprint, the geographical footprint in which you can actually do deals. So uh, and you have definitely 100%. made an impact in my life. And uh, I, I have no question that uh, many people, uh, t uh, TDI family members who are watching uh, this episode, they're going to be able to take a lot from you. So I definitely appreciate all that you have done for sure. 100%. Thank you, brother. And you're welcome. And uh, like I said, you want to go far, go along. If you want to go long, you want to go far, you want to actually if you want to be successful, go together. That's just what it is. So, Dave, I appreciate you as always. We grow together. And, we, again, this is this is what it's about, man. So I appreciate you for having me. Uh, definitely. And I think that's a perfect way to end it. Until next time. All right. Peace. Peace.